Welcome to Parasitology. So I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to take attendance. Um, he's going to ask you to go around the room, uh, state your name, preferred name, what you want to be called, uh, and why you're taking this class and something interesting about yourself. All right? So, start with you. I'm Renee. Renee? Casey? Yeah. Great. Uh, I took this class for I think for like a year. And I kinda needed it. Okay. And um I have a cute dog. Cute dog. Okay. Cool. Awesome. My name is Maya. Um, Maya Moore? Yes. Um, I took this class because I just thought it would be interesting and something interesting about myself. Um, I've never had coffee. Never had coffee. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Uh, uh, my name is Asia. Hold on. What? Asia. Asia. Yeah. Party? Uh, yes, that's party. Um, taking this class. Hold on. Also, at the theater, for any of you, I'll talk it up. Uh, some of you know I brew beer. I mean, I teach the GS 1181 beer class. Uh, the B Theater down at Performing Arts Center. Complimentary beverages. My beer is on tap. Come support them. You can taste them. <laughs> I'm not 21. <laughs> hey, wait till you're 21. <laughs> um, I'm Jacqueline Bull. I'm taking this class because it's super interesting and I wanted to take kind of like an elite semester, so I'm not even trying to get my girls like I was done. Um yeah, you you picked a hard semester. Oh um, that too. <laughs> um and an interesting thing about me is that I've read Twilight over 30 times since <laughs> third grade. <That's> <laughs> Better you than me. So I guess. Do you like it? If you like a book, you like it. My name is Michael, and I'm taking parasitology because I took entomology before, and I was interested in bug parasites and bug um, things just living inside bugs. And I thought it'd be interesting to just delve into parasites in general. And an interesting thing about me is. I listen to really specific punk rock music, or rock music. Punk rock or rock music, very specific. Like, yeah, very like specific. Like genre. 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 Interesting. Um, my name is Andrea Jimenez. Um, I took this class because I don't know why. I, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Okay. Not an interesting class. Okay. 
for level five. And then I decided let's use all of like even better. <laughs> no brownie points. No brownie points. <laughs> and um, interesting note uh, from me. Um, I don't know. I play soccer and uh, I like Marvel movies. You prefer to watch them in chronological order? Yeah. Based on the universe or on release date? Based on the end scenes? I want to go. <laughs> All right. Um, I would have assumed that's a good paying job. Yeah, I mean, I went to the sale farm, um, the same age as Michelle. Cool. Awesome. My name is Tice. Um, I thought this class was good. Like, fun fact about me is that. Tice? Yeah, Tice. Okay. Um, Persian. So you're taking this class why? Because it's interesting? Yeah. All right. I thought it'd be interesting. Interesting thing about yourself? Other than your Persian? Um, nothing. You like Persian food? Yeah, I love it. Do you cook? Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, I was pushing for buffets. Oh, uh, my name's Zach. And um, I'm taking this class. I need another lab or class in the lab. Um, I took the hydroecology class last semester, so I decided to take this one. And then, um, fun fact about me I'm graduating here. I mean, if I pass this class, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> good class I live in Colorado for a little bit before transferring here. Cool. Where'd you go before transferring? Um, I went to Colorado State. Okay. I'm a matter of my HG, but cool. My name is Tyler, and uh, I need an honor contract, and this part said you're pretty cool. So. And then uh, I work at the wine round in Stoke. Really? Oh, that must be rough. Yeah, uh, 20 <laughs> Yeah, well, there's some legal ways around it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Uh, you're not the first that I've had that's worked out at the winery. Uh, oh, that would have been you. That was years ago. Uh, was it Kinsey, maybe? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think it, it would have before if it was before your time. So, yeah, didn't know that until I went out there. Um, small world. Cool. Awesome. Well, my name is Caitlin. And I um, I'm taking this You have a brother named Ricky? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know your brother. Yeah. Called baseball together. My name is Hudson Payne. I'm taking this class not because I'm strange. There's my credit. I'm oh, the class. <laughs> I like this professor, though, and I'm just, you might be able to explain my opinion. I think so. I think uh, I'll. And then my fun fact is um, I'll be assisting optometry in the fall. Which one? Optometry. Optometry, we're at. Thank you. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, I'm Sarah Martinez. Um, I'm taking this class because one, I think it would be interesting, and two, I don't know anything about parasites, so I want to expand my knowledge. And an interesting fact about me is um, I have a deaf dog. I'd say unfortunate, but yeah, it's, but it's probably good. But it, you know, whenever a person walks by, they can't hear them. When yeah, truck goes we by. found out because whenever she was like sleeping, we would make so much noise that she would never wake up. <laughs> wow. All right.
Which one? I know who BT is. <laughs> they call it here when, when my wife is driving. <laughs> cool. I bet it was packed. I bet it was packed. All right. Uh, well, yeah, I'm Dr. Nagavetish. Most of you know. I should change the title of this live stream. Uh, This is my field, that's why I teach it. Uh, interesting thing, that, there's a lot of cool things that I think, or at least I think there's a lot of cool things. Uh, I wasn't initially interested in parasitology. The, the plan was to do more uh, forest ecology, uh, plant ecology, and it just so happened that our ecologist went on sabbatical a year. I was trying to do some undergrad research, so I got in with a field biologist who did parasite work, and rest of his is history. Really, you pick parasites, you could do any field in biology because it's so integrated. If you want to go the ecology route, you can. If you want to do the immunology route, you can. It's just a, it's, it's a dynamic field. Um, it's, you know, you could say it's a senior capstone. You could use, pro you could probably use parasitology as a senior capstone because it draws on so many other classes. And that is something that we'll be doing in this class. All right. And we do have a couple people missing, so I am live streaming today. Uh, and they're probably, yes, but I'm not there to introduce them, but they'll get caught when they, when they arrive. Uh, that's good. Uh, one thing that I do like to start with, not all the time, but parasites in the news. All right, you normally see parasites make the news, you see the headlines, and some, a lot of times headlines are just junk, uh, you know, and, and this just repeats. The person that writes it has no idea, but I saw this. Scientists discover a tarantula killing worm. And it's named, they named him after Jeff Daniels. Who knows who Jeff Daniels is? Let me go over here. There's a cursor. Come on now. I bet you do. Images. I didn't want to search and then start getting a bunch of different odd pictures. Jeff Daniels. Uh, been in numerous movies. Uh, Dumb and Dumber would be the classic one that we've seen. Uh, so, uh, named after him. Why him? Because he was in Arachnophobia, which was a, a old movie, probably, I believe, before most, if not all of you were born. Uh, he was the, the lead killer of all the, the fighters there. Why is this important? Um, first, Parasites in arachnids are pretty rare, uh, and that is, I mean, we do have some, some types of uh, worms, some types of nematodes that do specialize on arachnids. Um, we don't normally see them here. They're, they're more in Middle Eastern parts because uh, they would go into uh, scorpions, some of the other spiders in that area. Uh, but here's a tarantula with a nematode. It's just kind of unusual. Uh, a lot of things that kind of go wrong. This does kill the host. Uh, they don't know why, uh, but this is the, the first page. And, and it just appeared. It was just published. So kind of interesting, describing a, a nematode species. And that's something that, that's pretty consistent. Normally, the journals always have a new description of parasites because you, you're only our knowledge of the parasites is only limited by the number of people that are looking at the organisms. So you could say that it's rare because it doesn't happen. There wasn't any evolutionary history, or it's rare because you don't really have a whole lot of people studying and looking for parasites in these hosts. So, parasites in the news. That was pretty cool. Uh, this is parasitology. We do have the syllabus posted. We can take a look at it briefly. Uh, let's enlarge that. All right, we're meeting here 10 to uh, 10.50. Our labs on Mondays, we didn't have it this week. Hopefully no one showed up, that I wasn't there. Our final exams on Monday, the first, first day of that week. Uh, since we do have our exam on Monday, the plan is to finish lecture at least on Wednesday, so that way you've got third, we have Friday to answer questions. My office is down in the basement. If you need to find me, uh, if you know where the tri -Beta office is, go across the hall. It's a conference area, conference room area. 
have my office hours posted. Uh, it is, I just have it as 8.30 to 11 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but I'm normally in my office other times, including in the afternoons. Uh, so if you want to try to meet at another time, you can always make an appointment or you can stop by my office. Uh, and if I'm in there, I, as long as I don't have a class coming up or a meeting that's getting ready to start, uh, I will meet. I will meet with you. That being said, I am, there is that conference area, that study room down there. So if you come down and talk to me, uh, and there are people out there in a meeting, look through at my office, uh, at my office door. If I'm in my office, the door will be closed, but I'll stick a green note card that says, please knock. You are more than welcome to come into that conference room to get back to my office at that time. I use that green note card so that you know I'm there, and that you don't kind of walk into the meeting, knock, and then have to leave because I don't answer. So I, I'd always put a, up a green note card. When those meetings occur, who, who knows? Uh, sometimes there are the graduate seminar classes will meet down there. Uh, and they meet once a week. Uh, other times it might be a lab meeting. So Dr. Dollar's lab meeting might meet there. Uh, Dr. Ammerman's lab meeting might meet there. So don't feel like you can't go in because there's a meeting down there. Uh, I'm going to say you can read through this. I think that it's all basically self-explanatory. Uh, everything that I'm required to include is in there. Uh, attendance is expected. Uh, technically, our OP says that I have to take attendance, so I will. But I do look, I do keep attendance for lab, and, and I mark it here just in case we have a contact tracer contact me. Um, we'll have quizzes. Quizzes will be on Blackboard. They're after various presentations. Uh, those that have the ecology class will be familiar with these. Um, you'll have a couple days to take it, and then the key goes live um, the week of the, of the of the exam. So here's kind of where the, the quiz kind of factors in. We have a due date, a due date and time, and they're normally at like 11.30 at night. Uh, but I understand that sometimes you're going to miss it. So you can continue to take it. You can take it again after that due date, but it'll be marked as late. Now, if you start it at, let's say, 11.29, it's going to be marked as late because it, it Blackboard records when you end it, when you submit it. So I have to go in and just look to see, check the times, make sure it was you at least started it before that deadline, and that'll be fine. Um, if you miss the quiz, you can take it, it'll be at a, at a late penalty. So I give you the first one, no, no late penalty, then after that it'll be 10% reduction off, off, that, off that quiz grade. Uh, and because I'm going to allow you to take it at, you know, late, uh, I'm not going to release the quiz until the Wednesday uh, prior to our lecture exam. So our first lecture exam is in about four weeks or so. You're not going to be able to see the key until that Wednesday. So I think I've set the dates as like uh, early Wednesday morning five in the morning after that time, uh, it's locked. You can't take it for late credit at that point because I need the keys to go live. Uh, breakdown, quizzes are 15%. Uh, the exams, I have first one at 20% 20, 20 and then second and third at 25%. Uh, that's for a reason. Kind of gives you an idea of what that first, first exam is going to be like if you haven't had many. Uh, try to minimize the, the pain. But really, the material for the first exam isn't that difficult. I actually think the third exam is probably the harder one uh, because of the life cycles that, that we're expected to. Final exams drop to 15. Uh, so again, it's going to have less of, of a negative impact uh, on your overall grade, but it can have a significant positive impact because uh, I'll replace the lowest exam grade with the final exam grade. So uh, it's, uh, it's always good. I do have graduate and honors thesis. How many are taking it for honors credit? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we're going to do, you do have your choice. You can take part in our project. Um, we're going to look at parasites and snails. We're going to uh, head down and collect them. And I'll probably have to wait until uh, February. And then the lab room will be where we, where we can work uh, on those. Uh, you're going to, we're going to work as a team, maximize our sample size, and then you're going to write basically a lab report, uh, summarizing your data and interpreting it and looking up, you know, parasites and snails. And, uh, try to explain what, what you're seeing or why we see it. 
If you don't want to do that, you do have an option of writing a paper, a research paper. Uh, it's going to be a topic relevant to parasitology. It's a pretty significant research paper, 20 to 30 pages, and that's because the time you spend going through this, these snails will be somewhat significant. So that's your, that's your, that's your option. If you do need special accommodations, please contact Student Disability Services. Get me that. Um, everything else is on here. Um, technology. So, best thing you could do when you take your notes is to write them out by hand. Best thing. It, it takes more processing power in your brain to do that and starts the learning process. That's what I recommend. If you choose to take it, uh, you know, type it out. It's, I'm not going to stop you there, but please, if you're going to do do that, uh, don't be cruising the internet watching watching YouTube or whatever, because people sitting behind you are going to be distracted. All right. Uh, if you want to record, you, you can. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't mind. Um, and if you do, I know we're at the at the stage where some some of you are expecting phone calls or like interviews or whatever. Just give me a heads up. The phone rings. Answer it. You can walk out and, and take it. I, I don't. I'm more concerned about just you know, causing disruption in the class. And, and I, I had a student a couple of years back playing that Golden Tee golf game on their phone like the entire lecture, uh, and I had somebody behind them come and say, "I, I can't focus on the lecture because I keep keep watching them." So that's good to know. Uh, all right, COVID nineteen. This is what we want. Uh, in the past, I have been live streaming. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it really hurts attendance, uh, but I am live streaming when I, when I need to. The thing that, that we have is that I have last year's lectures still posted. So on our Blackboard site, if you go to lecture, there's extra credit opportunity. I have last year's playlist, which is the same content material. It's just the off-topic stuff, the, the parasites and the new stuff, that's going to probably be different. Maybe even the questions might be different, the questions that come from the audience. But if you miss a class, I'm going to say, get the notes from a student, and then you can watch last year's, last year's class. Uh, if we are live streaming, it's going to be available. I have the recording. It's going to be on YouTube. But I have to send you that link so that you can watch it. And that's to encourage attendance here. That can change next week or two, depending on what ASU does, but uh, that's going to be the plan, is to try to avoid having the live stream recording. On the lecture, we have everything posted. Uh, you do have these sheets. I'm trying something new, because I did the presentations just in case we have to uh, switch to doing live stream, and you know, I don't give those to you. Uh, you're expected to kind of write them out because that's what we would have been doing up on the board. Uh, probably go through a box of chalk in a semester. Um, so what I've done is kind of made through the outline, kind of a blank outline with occasionally some 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 stuff that kind of gets gets you to it. Um, this is up there at, as as electronic copy. I also printed them out this year. If you want me to keep printing them out, I'm going to need a count so I need so I know how many how many to print out. If you prefer just to use the PDF and, and take notes on the PDF on a tablet, that's fine too. Uh, I just instead of having to print out 20 copies of it every time, uh, I'll just print out however many we need. All right, so we're going to try something new. Something new. I have most of them up for this, all the way up, I think, to the monogenes. Anyways, um, now, not to the to the monogene, not through the monogene. I have them up, but then I also have figures, which these are in presentations. So on this one, these are handouts that have the figures from the presentation. Uh, these I would keep because, you know, uh, it's diagram in the presentation, and then you can kind of open it up and add notes to there. Uh, this is probably a better way than be trying to draw out a lot of this stuff. And I did draw out a lot of this stuff. But those are, those are posted. Those are posted. In our lecture course, Blackboard course, that is where I put our lab since we're just for the same class. We don't have a separate lab. Um, and I have wordless and I have um, the manual material 
and you get to see the accessibility stuff. Uh, we're working on it. Unfortunately, when there's figures, you have to do uh, extra content. You have to do descriptions uh, of those, and I haven't gone through a lot of those. That's going to be very tedious. Uh, but pay attention to this, and I do want you to look at these species presentations. So in our lab, we are, everyone's going to present a species. And the species presentation is like five to ten minute presentation where you give where you give taxonomy, you give life cycle, you give you know pathology if it causes pathology, you give like common names. You just basically introduce the parasite, much like what what we'll do in our class where we talk about the parasites that we cover in the lab. Uh, I want you to look through the, this list. This is going to be our option of parasites. Uh, we're going to have we have twenty enrolled in the class, so we're going to need about six to present on each of our main units. Our main units would be our platyhelminths, which is what we start with. Uh, then we have our nematodes and canthocephalins. That's, that's the second exam. And then we have our nematomorphs, uh, arthropods, some of the arthropods, and our protozoans. Really, our protozoans is, is the big one uh, that we cover at the end of the course. So look through these lists. If you have another species that sounds interesting, you can always email me uh, with that species idea. And I'll look at it and, and decide if, if we can do if we can include it. So this isn't just like a hard and fast uh, list, uh, but it is the suggestion. These are all I have them up here for a reason. All right. Just know that if you if you give me a, a, a species that we're going to cover in class, for exa example, schistosoma, uh, I'll just say no because I'm covering that as part of the, the class material. Take a look at this. In lab, we'll pick, we'll pick our uh, species because our first presentations will be um, that second week of lab. So it's the week of January 31st. It's basically the first week of February. Take a look at that. Look those up. Any questions? And we'll, we'll talk about form, formats of the stuff. Right now, I am looking at Quizzes will be online. I'm looking at the lab quizzes. These are like practice practicals. Those would be online. And those will be, uh, you'll have like that week to take them. So we can, you can look at stuff in the lab, we can answer stuff, and then you can kind of utilize uh, the open lab. We're the only lab in that, that classroom. But then our practical will be actually in the lab itself. And it will be set up as practical with multiple stations. We have 20 people in, in the class. So we'll break it up and do uh, 10 come in at 2 o'clock and 10 of you come in at 3 o'clock. And then we'll just split it up that way. Because the practical will take no longer than an hour. All right, our exams right now will likely be uh, probably there will be multiple choice slash multiple answer section. And then we've got life cycles. So you're going to have to diagram some life cycles for the exam. And the last one is our, is our symptoms, um, I should say diagno diagnosis, where I give you a description. Um, I give you, let's say, background information in Thailand. Who was in Thailand? I, we'll use you as an example. Say, you came back from Thailand and two years later you start exhibiting these symptoms. Right? And then a couple weeks later you went to the doctor and they prescribed this, didn't help. A couple, couple weeks later you get more symptoms. All right. I'll ask you what parasite is it and some of those symptoms, one of those symptoms will be in bold and you'll describe why you get that symptom. So for like malaria, uh, one of the things is called black water fever because the rupturing of the red blood cells cause a buildup of, of hemoglobin and filtering of your kidneys, so it gives a cola colored urine, hence the black water fever, the black water part of the fever. All right, I might say this this black urine or this cola colored urine, your response would be that's you know hemoglobin, hemozone in, in the urine because the red blood cells are, are busted by the parasite, and you would you would know the parasite. But that's the kind of diagnosis and it's Five questions. Some of you I know are planning to go to med school. That's kind of the relation. You kind of have to think 
or what are the symptoms that we see, and context clues too. So location might be an important indicator because we'll have multiple, you're gonna see, there's a lot of GI parasites that cause gastrointestinal discomfort and possibly diarrhea. I can't just say diarrhea, that covers quite a few parasites. There's gotta be other things that go with it. All right, so check out the syllabus. If you have questions, stop by my office and we will answer them. Any questions right now? All right, so we're gonna start with terminology. This one is definitions. That's really what we're targeting. We're kind of giving you background information on, on terminology. We'll have a quiz after this. And then what we're gonna have to do is an immunology lecture, uh, probably a day and a half, giving you basically the immunology class in like a, a class and a half here. All right. We need to know that background uh, before we can start continuing on because our big focus is, is the parasites. Why are they successful? Right. So, our knowledge of parasites extend back to at least the Ebers papyrus, which, again, 1500 BC. Uh, we knew about, about parasites. This Ebers papyrus was uh, essentially a medical document, and it described treatment options uh, for various symptoms. And some of these treatment options you can look at. That. Uh, that's some of the things where it's like, yeah, you take goose guts and rub it over the abdomen. I mean, what on earth would that, would that actually accomplish? But that's what it is. A uh, big part of that is recognizing that you have some specific organisms have pathologies that are consistent between people. So if individuals are ex experiencing constipation and, and, and massive abdominal cramping, Chances are those individuals have the same type type of symptoms, and they would call it, they would recognize these organisms as being as being some worms. All right, and this is the not accidental part of it. This wasn't just you randomly develop these symptoms; that there was an underlying cause. All right, so you have these organisms caused this pathology, and without the host, then these organisms just end up dying. They don't. They, they made that association. You don't find these organisms elsewhere. They're only inside the host. All right. Uh, if I move through too quick, uh, so I should say, with these, I do have it as outline format, and the level of the bullets kind of tied to the level, and I don't include all of the levels because I don't know what all of you want to include. All right. We ready? All right, so we know it dated back, but what is it? Well, it's essentially a form of symbiosis, and symbiosis is living together. Living together. Now, you've been exposed to symbiosis in some of your previous classes. All right, the types of symbioses that we know are essentially grouped by the type of interaction that we see between the organisms. The grouping could be based on the trophic interactions. Is it a direct trophic interaction? Is it indirect? Is there no trophic interaction? We could group it based on the degree of harm. So uh, how harmful is one and how much benefit does it get from that relationship? Something you might not understand is that with this symbiosis, death could be a, a measure could be a grouping level. Does one of the individuals cause death of the other? And related to that, is that one species going to cause the death of just one individual or potentially many individuals over the course of their life? All right, so this is all what, what we're grouped by. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these symbiotic relationships and kind of break it down to figure out where does parasitism fall in all of these symbiotic relationships. All right? Let me pull that down. So we can start with the, that situation where we have no trophic interaction. If we have no trophic interaction, we typically see a forest, or we call it forest. Right. Forest is more like hitching a rod. Uh, that's usually the example that, that we see where you have, let's say, a um, shark, uh, remora, remora sharks, a 
attach on to a, a larger individuals, lar larger sharks. They use a larger shark as a transport. There's no benefit, or they get all the benefit because they basically hitching the ride and they get the bits that are left over uh, from that the larger predator doesn't get, but the larger predator is not harmed in any way. That would be 4C. And it's, we kind of key it in as one host benefits, that's our plus. The other host is a zero, it's not a positive or a negative interaction. We can have an indirect trophic interaction. So you get some sort of benefit through not directly feeding on another individual, but there, there's a benefit trophically that you gain by, by living together. And this is commensalism. Again, one benefits the other, and that is neither benefited nor harmed. Right. Great example are uh, your fiddler crabs and then the anemones that grow on the shell. Right. Fiddler crab is not really harmed by it. You might argue that the fiddler crab gets a benefit because the anemone uh, wards off some predators. I think that's kind of a stretch. But the anemone gains a benefit because the fiddler crab can transport it to various areas, which might provide a, uh, a food benefit. It might move to an area where there is more food. The direct trophic interaction is where the relationship actually directly results in acquisition of nutrients. All right? So if you have a benefit, or both of them benefit, that's mutualism. That interaction benefits both. Why does it benefit both? There has to be some sort of increase in nutrient acquisition, which then gets trans, uh, transitioned to our offspring. All right, so in this case, both of our individuals benefit. If there is harm, then we have exploitation. All right, one individual or one species is going to be exploiting the other. And we're going to have to further subdivide into killing, do we always kill or do we rarely kill, and how many of those individuals do we kill or, or harm? All right, so we can say, if we always kill the host, then it come, then how many? All right, if we have many hosts are killed, or, or many individuals are killed, then that's a classic predator-prey relationship. The predator benefits because they're acquiring nutrients, the prey does not because they're, they're dying. They're getting killed. That one predator is going to uh, have a symbiotic relationship with many individuals. They're killing many different prey. So that's predator. If only one is killed, then that's a parasitoid. And we're really not going to talk about parasitoids. But you always have a host that's killed. One of the species is killed. And that individual that's killed, that's only one per individual. So what's an example of a parasitoid? Who had entomology? Wasps. Okay. Right? So it would be the twisted Parasitoid. Parasitoid. They call it a parasitoid because you're killing you're always killing the host, right? It drives its nutrients from the host and then it kills it as it's coming out. What's that guy? Xenomorph. What's a xenomorph? See, it's, from, it's from Italy. It's a parasitoid. Where do you think they got the idea? Parasites. See, parasites are all over. All right, so what happens if we seldom kill? Now we're getting into our, our parasites. But we also have to account for micropredators because you, you can think about mosquitoes, for example. Those are technically a micropredator. They get a benefit by feeding off of blood, by feeding off that, that host interaction. Are they killing us? No, they don't. Right? It's minimal harm. If, if, and, and it is harmful. We, we do have a cost associated with it, no matter how slight. But those mosquitoes are going to feed on multiple individuals. Many individuals are harmed. Parasites have, an, have their relationship with their host like this, where 
you have one individual inside that that parasite's inside one host. That is the one host that's going to be affected. All right. Does it kill them? No, seldom. And and this is kind of the the abstract part of it. One parasite individual is seldomly kills that one host individual. If you have hundreds of parasites, that could kill them. But again, a single individual will rarely kill the host itself. And that's what a parasite is. All right. That's where parasitism fits in with all of these symbiotic relationships. All right, so what can we define as our parasitism? Or as our parasite? So a parasite is an organism that lives in or on another organism for at least part of its life cycle and causes harm to the host. It's a specific, it's a specific definition because we really have to separate parasites from all of the other species that form symbioses. All right, so a parasite has to be dependent on the host. All right, it needs it in some way. If it doesn't, then it's not really a, a, a true full-fledged parasite. It can survive free living. And the other aspect is the parasite must cause harm. Because if it doesn't, then it's just like a commensal. Or maybe a mutualist if, there, if, there's, a, if there's a benefit. And so our parasites are going to be those organisms that live in or on another organism for at least part of their life cycle and cause harm. We're going to see with at least part of its life cycle that several of our parasites that we cover, they utilize more than one host. So at least part of their development has to occur in or on a host. Maybe all of it needs to be in or on a host. But at least some of that, a host has to be required. Now, what, what defines harm, or how do we define harm? Uh, this is going to be pretty difficult to do, right? It's going to be difficult to do, because our vision of harm is somewhat skewed by our other perceptions of, of harm, right? So, yeah. putting my, my hand over a candle, that's pretty harmful. Mosquito biting me? Not so much. But a mosquito still causes some degree of harm. All right, so harm is typically classified as a reduction in fitness. As a reduction in fitness. How do we get a reduction in fitness? Well, we can get it in two different ways. One is just due to a loss of energy. So the parasite is you know, stealing nutrition from the host. Maybe the parasite's inducing an immune response, so now that the host has to spend more energy on fighting that parasite than on growing and maturing and reprodu reproduction. Could be repair mechanisms, so maybe the parasite's causing a slight amount of damage that, again, the host has to divert energy away from reproduction and survival towards just the repair stuff and, and so forth. So you can't just think of harm as being something that's massively recognized. Anything that's going to cause a diversion of energy away from reproduction and survival towards maintenance-type tasks, that's going to constitute a reduction in fitness. Now, I, I should probably say, some of you were in ecology. We talked about this pool of energy. Energy is divided up or can, is allocated to growth, survival, or growth, maintenance, and reproduction. All right? And the maintenance includes... Repair mechanisms, immune responses, and growth is, is maturation, getting to reproduction. And then once you get to reproduction, that's, that's your offspring. How much do you allocate to offspring? So if we can divert money away from that reproduction, um, then that's going to hurt our fitness. The other way in which it can reduce fitness is altering the host behavior. All right, so if the parasites might, might not be causing much harm to the host, it's just hanging out in the gut, not doing much. You could say the loss of energy is, is zero because you know, feces is still moving out of the host and, and there's energy still in that feces. But if that parasite secretes some compound that causes the, the host to change its behavior, that could cause a reduction in fitness. Maybe it's just you have so many there, so many inside that it weighs the host down, makes them slower. 
makes them more likely to be caught. That's also a reduction in fitness. So, so you can't just think of this harm as being, we have to see it with that one individual. It may be something that we don't necessarily see, or it may be number dependent. For us, we can get a tapeworm, probably nothing wrong with this. We wouldn't notice. If we get ascaris, has everyone had zoology? Do you remember ascaris? Big round worm? Probably that big? Did you dissect it? If we had one of those, we probably wouldn't know. Probably wouldn't know. Well, actually, if you just had one, you, I think you wouldn't know. Uh, because that one's going to look for look for a mate and probably wander into your gut. You'll feel it there. Into your stomach, you'll feel queasy. It'll wander looking for a mate. But if you had two and they would just happen to be the opposite sex, probably wouldn't know. So is that a parasite? Yeah, still. It has a potential to cause harm. It has a potential to cause harm. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop here and we're going to pick up classification of parasites. We're going to get into a bunch of different definitions. So if you can guess, our first quiz will be a lot of definitions, basically what it is. All right, and we'll finish this out. Uh, the immunology part, I think I did post... I think I did post that uh, that lecture. Yeah, immunology. I posted the full PDF of that lecture. You can print that out or just follow along. All of this is FYI. Uh, for now, when we get to specific mechanisms, specific aspects of immunology in the parasites, you will be expected to know that. So we're going to kind of throw everything out here now, kind of give you a background of, of what the host immune system is doing, how it fights it off, and then we'll talk specifics with various parasites. All right. This is your second day, maybe the first day. This is my first class. So we've got one down, and I don't know how many other classes. Have a good one.